Shalom, shalom, everybody. Once again, it is your brew. That's me, Bon Shemayim, back with another one. And today's video is pretty much going to be uh, most Yasharala is still asleep. I've been hearing about <clears throat> the things going on in the Middle East and how they're prophecy. And how though they might intermingle with prophecy, they're not prophecy in the manner in which people think. So without further ado, uh, let's get into it. My phone's going off right now, y'all. Let me see. It's spam. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to start at Ezekiel 38, and we're going to start at chapter 8, right? Ezekiel 38, chapter 8. It says, After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, right? <clears throat> so what we're watching is the land about to get brought back for us with the sword, right? But this is not... This is not speaking of uh, something that has already happened. This is something that is going to happen, right? With, that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations. You see, so when it's saying this, let's go back. After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, right? This land that is speaking of any land that we dwell on is our land, is our people, right? And is gathered out of many peoples, right? So it's saying that the people here are gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, right? <clears throat> Which have been always a waste, right? Let's get that always continually a waste right because the people of god have been continually trampled on is what this is saying but it is brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely all of them right so all of these people god's people will be brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely all of them so this is at a time in which these people will be dwelling safely in which our people god's people will be dwelling safely and we'll be taken out of the land so this is not talking about what happened in 1960s or 1948 right and this is not talking about <clears throat> and if that if this isn't talking about what happened in 1948 then what's happening right now is not prophecy in the manner that they're speaking of <clears throat> right so let's get it and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, and thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. And thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God. <clears throat> it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into my mind. It says that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up into the land of unwalled villages. I will go up to them that are at rest. And they that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates to take spoil and to take prey and to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited. You see, so the desolate places means the destruction. We're headed into the time of destruction. We haven't inhabited the destroyed places yet because they're not destroyed. We are, haven't went through the wilderness. We haven't gathered. This is speaking as after God's people gather and go into the wilderness and everything like that. Not the way that they try to make it seem. Now let's go into Revelation 7. 7, 1, 2, 3. It says, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth. See, this is the danger that God has been holding back and which we're about to come through that has already happened and destroyed the earth for that scripture we were reading, right? Nor the sea, nor the trees, right? So this wind is not to hurt the earth, right? It's not to blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor, the, nor any tree. 
And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having a seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Right. And this is the seal of the 12,000 of each tribe. So, no, this is not no camp in specific. If God willing, there is one of these members in each camp, but this is not a camp in specifically. This is speaking of 144,000 people spread all over the all over the world, 12,000 of each tribe. Right. And the reason we went into this is because when we were going into this at first, it says the land of unwalled villages. Right. Because this was our people coming together and becoming that land of unwalled villages, right? <clears throat> and these people right here are the same people, the 144,000 are these same people who will be in these unwalled villages, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> now let's get into the next one, which is Ezekiel 37. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's go back to that really quick. Just kind of want to go over some Messiah. Matter of fact, let me go into this. I'm about to go into another one. I'm about to take this one. Pop it right there. And I'm going to go into Ezekiel 9. We're going to go over this again. Just so we can get the unwalled cities part. All right, so let's see, Ezekiel 9, da, 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 da. <laughs> all right, so here we go, and let's go, Ezekiel 9, all right, then he cried in my ears with a loud voice saying, bring near the executioners, these are the same angels we were reading about in Revelation, right, of the city, each with his destroying weapon in his hand. Behold, six men came from the direction of the upper gate. This is talking about the heavens. We're going to get into that. Which faces the north, each with his weapon for the slaughter in his hand. And with them was a man clothed in linen with a writing case at his wrist, at his waist. I'm sorry, with a writing case at his waist to show that these are the same people, the same person with the writing inkhorn that we just read about right here in Revelations, right? No, no. This one, we didn't go into that one with the writer's ink coin. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm then added other scriptures out of Revelations in this that wouldn't part of the plan. <laughs> okay. Which faces north, each with his weapon for slaughter and in his hand. And with them was a man clothed in linen, right? This this man was mentioned in the Revelations when he says, uh, when he goes to measure the gates of the people, right? But he says, don't count the outer gates because that's for the Gentiles, right? <clears throat> so just Google that if you don't know what I'm talking about. With a writing case at his waist, and they went and stood beside the bronze altar. And now the glory of, of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherub which was rested on the threshold of the house. Now we know this is uh, our savior, right? And he called to the man clothed in linen who had the writing case at his waist. And the Lord said to him, pass through the city, through Jerusalem, through Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of the man who sigh and groan over all the abominations that are committed in it, right? So the, the man who are sighing and groaning for all the, the abominations committed within their people and to the others he said in my hearing pass through the city after him and strike your eyes shall not spare and you shall not show no pity kill the old man hold on what this okay that wasn't the right okay I, I like the King James Version. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the man that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city. 
and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient man which were before the house, which is speaking of our people. It's right. <clears throat> and he said unto them, Defile the house, fill the courts with the slain, go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them. And I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, without destroy all the residue of Israel in the pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem. Then he said unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of blood, and the city is full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also in mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their own head. Right? So <clears throat> the reason I went into this is because this is the destruction that's going to come on our people soon. You understand? <clears throat> and the man with the ink horn was the angel that sent this, these, these angels that sent the same angels we were speaking of in Revelation 7, which said that the four angels were told not to go until the seal was done. This is that same seal, right? <clears throat> And the reason we get into this, because this that seal is these people, and these people are the people that makes up the land of unwalled villages. It's just a community of people. They haven't established a, a walled city or a walled civilization because God will be their wall and their protection, right? <laughs> now let's get into Ezekiel 37. And we're going to start at 9, right? Then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy. Son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Right? So these dead people, this is the Israel. They're dead. Our people were dead. Most that's why I say most the, the, the name of this uh lesson plan is most Israel is still asleep, right? It says, breathe upon the slain that they may live. That's what the bruise are doing. That's why I try not to go at the bruise or at any of the camps, because that's what the bruise are doing. They're prophesying to the wind like the Bible said. They're speaking so that they could breathe upon these dead people so that they could put life back into them, right? The life given through the Most High God. It says, so I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came unto them, and they lived. Right. So once this energy, this truth, this spirit come into them, they start to revive, get back to their laws, statutes and commandments, stand back up on their feet, like it says. Right. And they live and stood up upon their feet in a, an exceeding great army. Right. So this is talking about God's people coming back. They were dead. They're coming back. Right. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Right. So this is the proof. Behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. So it's not that we're dead. It's just that people feel like their hope is lost. Right. They're cut off from God. Right. That's why we're dead, because we've lost the thing that's given us life. Right. We're cut off from our parts. Right. We're cut off from God. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel, right? So when it speaks in Revelations about the two prophets and, and that they were buried for three and a half days and nobody suffered their bodies to be put into a grave, this is what it's talking about, right? And I will cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. You see, so that didn't happen. There was no dead or oppressed people who went into Israel in 1948 from all over the world that were scattered through slavery and captivity, right? And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you, right? <clears throat> so remember in Acts, when the spirit fell on them, the Holy Spirit fell on them, 
That's what we will go through in the wilderness. He says, I will pour my spirit out on you again. Right. So that's what we will go through in the wilderness. Right. And shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Right. So these are the things that we will go through. We're waking up out of our sleep. Not everybody's woke up. Most of Yasharala is still asleep. They still call themselves black or Mexican or or uh, 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 Puerto Rican or, you know, Haitian, Jamaican. They still call themselves. They're still attached to these worldly names. They haven't woken up to the, who they are yet. Right. But part of us waking up leads to the spirit getting put in us. And then we shall live and then he shall place us in our own land. Right. So this is not what those people over there have went through yet. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. They were brought to Israel in 1948 under Europe, under England, gave them the decree to say that they could go over there. That wasn't God, <laughs> right? That wasn't God. The destruction over there hadn't happened yet, right? It says, uh, <clears throat> now, now let's get into this really quick. Get into this other scripture. It says, come, this is a Hosea 6, right? Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us, right? In the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. We're going to go deeper into that. We're going to go deeper into that. We just want to keep going down on this, right? This is Ezekiel 37, we back at 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah, and for the children of Israel his companions, and take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all of the house of Israel and his companions, and join them one to another into one stick. And they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou means by thee? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, in the tribes of Israel his fellows, and I will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah. That's what's going to happen through this destruction of the world. He's going to force these sticks to go together to become one right and make them one stick and they shall be one in mine hand right in god's hand will be back one people in god's hand <clears throat> and that's why we have to go through this and go through the wilderness and the sticks whereunto thou writest shall be in the hand before thy eyes and say unto the and say it says and say unto them Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, which we're currently at, right? They're not among the heathen. We're among the heathen, right? Whether they be gone and will gather them on every side and will bring them into their own land, which is a future prophecy and not a past prophecy, right? And I will make them one nation. And that's how you know, because it's got to be one nation. It just said the two sticks coming together. Everybody over there consider themselves to be of Judah. Right? It's the, it's the nations. It's all the nations coming together to make that one nation again. Right? And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. We know that's talking about our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Wamasiach. Right? And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them so that they, it says, so shall they be my people. And I will be their God. You see, so the cleansing happens in the wilderness, right? In David, we know that 
our our king, our savior, Yeshua Wamasiach, comes from the seed or sperma of David, right? In David, my servant shall be their king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd, and they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my, and my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. Right. So this is not one. To, this is not a covenant to be broken. It's not a covenant that's not going to. This is the covenant that lasts forever. This is that. When it spoke of in this, what we just went through in Hosea, uh, back to it, right? Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, will he revive us, right? So after two days, will he rise us up? And in two days, will he revive us? We will come back to life. We will dwell safely with the Savior after 2,000 years. After his death, that's the two days. One day is a thousand years to God, right? So after 2000 years, he will revive us. That's how you know we're not in the year 2000. In the year 2000 is Christ's comeback. Who knows that date? Nobody. As far as I'm concerned, as far as I believe. But after two days, he will revive us. The third, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. In the third we are going to live in the sight of God. Now, I'm going to break that down. But first, let's get into this. This is 1 Corinthians 15. Right? <clears throat> here we go. And this is what it's talking about. We're going to break that down. Right? 15 and 20. 1 Corinthians 15 and 20. It says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Right? So he was the first one who woke out of those who slept or died. Right. For since by man came death. So by Adam, all men die. By man come also the resurrection of the dead. So through Christ, all men have a chance of resurrecting through him, through our savior, through Yeshua Wamasiach. For as in Adam, all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive, right? Some to receive honor and some to dishonor, some to judgment and some to mercy, right? But every man in his own order, right? Christ is the first fruit. Afterwards, they that are Christ at his coming, right? And we just spoke of that. Those who are like him at his coming, right? Because we live that after this war and after this, when they come back after us, we know, after the war, and we go into the wilderness, and they come back at us in the wilderness, we know Christ is going to come. From Christ's coming, when they come back after us, like the Bible says, everybody going to see our Savior coming to the earth, right? So once the fowls, the, you can read this in the Bible, once the fowls of the air, you can Google search this, the fowls of the air and the beasts of the land tear up the people who come after us in the wilderness when we're dwelling safely, as we were just reading earlier in the scriptures, and they come after us, right? They get the thought to come after us, and the fowls and the beasts tear them up. We're going to see Christ coming. And that's when we make ourselves to that land where the seven areas, where the, the, the ocean will be split in seven different ways like it was in the past, like he did for Moses, but in seven path, uh, paths to uh Cush and Pathos in, in uh, uh, Libya, right? All of those regions at that time will make our way towards that area because we'll see his coming, but not before then. Not before then. Let's get it. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of... Wait, wait, let's get it. It says, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits afterwards they that are Christ at his coming then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God so that's what it was talking about in the second after the second day 
Let's get it. Let's get it. After two days, he will revive us. Christ will revive us. The third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. This is talking about the most high God's sight. This is a separation for Christ. We're going to get into it with this and through Revelations, right? <clears throat> but every man in his own order. Christ the first fruit. Afterwards, they that are Christ that is coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. We are the kingdom. We are the people, God's people, right? When he have, it says, when he shall have put down all rule, right? So this is after the thousand years of Christ's reign. Because the Bible says that Christ would reign for a thousand years. So this is after that thousand years. This is the third day now, right? So we, like we said, 1,000 years is one day to God, right? So this is the third day now. And shall have put down all rule and authority and power. Meaning Christ, our Savior, Yeshua wa Masiach, will no longer be over us. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So death is the enemy of God. We went over this before, not a friend. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So that third day is God's day. And this is talking about the third day. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. That's the third day. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. After Christ's thousand years reign, this first earth and the first heavens we see will be gone away. Right? And there was no more sea. So there's not going to be a sea in the new heaven. And I saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. You see, it's coming from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with man and he will dwell with them. So this is when we're in the sight of the most high God and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And with that, that is going to be this lesson plan for today. Thank y'all for tuning in. I just want to say, Kaula Ahaya by Shimmy Shia which is all praises to the Most High in the name of His Son. Thank y'all for tuning in. I really hope y'all enjoyed this uh, video. <clears throat> if you did or if you didn't, hit the like button. If you want to talk about something like this, let me know in the comments or just let me know what you think in general. I'm going to get to the comments of the last week videos after this video or after the next video, right? So... <clears throat> With that being said, I just want to say, uh, yeah, subscribe and share if you think other people need to hear this. And I just want to say thank you again, which is the water. Kaula Ahaya by Shimmy Shia, which is all praises to the Most High in the name of His Son. And Barakatha, which is bless you. And Shalawam, which is peaceful greetings. On that note, Shalawam and Barakatha. Peace out to the next time, y'all. Peace out.